ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा जय टू यू फ्रेंड्स We're coming in toward the end of chapter two of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, these are two stanzas in one, 62 and 63. Dwelling mentally on sense objects breeds attachment to them. From attachment arises craving. From craving, when frustrated, springs anger. Anger produces delusion. Delusion causes forgetfulness of the self. Loss of memory as to what one is in truth causes decay of the power of discrimination. From loss of discrimination ensues the annihilation of all right understanding. And so Krishna is showing here how we how the mind of man descends into complete absorption in delusion. First of all, Uh, if he gazes, but you can look at a thing. Gazing is different from just looking at it. Gazing mentally, thinking about it, brooding on it. Attachment grows by looking at it. And the more you look at a thing, you may think, well, I'm not attached. But the more you look at it, the mind feeds by what it, by what it uh, looks at, by what it becomes more and more identified with. As you look at things, no matter what they are, whether good, bad, or indifferent, you can take on its qualities. You can become identified with it. And so the first thing is that uh, when the mind becomes uh, attached, then I have to put on my glasses because I can't read without them. From attachment arises craving. And so when you look at a thing long enough, you begin to want it. You begin to feel identity with it and want to either own it or experience it or whatever it might be. Then from craving springs anger. I said craving when frustrated. That's the only way that anger would come. You want that and you can't get it. You want it and somebody else has gotten it before you. You want it and it uh, um, is not quite as good as you hoped it would be. Anger springs from frustrated desire. And if you can give up that, for example, some people want to be appreciated, and so they get angry when people don't appreciate them, don't treat them the way they think they ought to be. This is an attachment to the ego, which you're not gazing at, but you're identified with. And the more you identify yourself with it, the more you want to boost it. And when people start despising you, disliking you, dispreciare uh, is the Italian, I can't think of the English, but uh, um, not appreciating as it ought to be, then you find that people uh, become angry. And when you deal with anger, with angry people, try to calm them, because in their frustrated desire, they become restless, and in that restlessness too, they become angry. But anger produces delusion. When you uh, become angry about something, you no longer can see things in their proper proportion. Anger confuses the mind. And people, I know that some people think that they are only being righteously angry. Righteous anger is not anger. But if it's anger, in the name of righteousness, then that produces mental confusion. It produces the, the uh, um, restlessness of the mind that makes it impossible to see things clearly as they are. The first thing you do, that's why they say count ten. Count uh, ten is, is a way of saying it. I've said later a way of counting to ten each one Each number you count, feel that you're expanding your consciousness. A good technique when counting to ten, don't just say one, two, three, etc., but one, this body, two, two people, three, a group of people, and gradually feel your consciousness expanding 
to include the needs of other people and so on. Well, and then from the delusion comes loss of memory. Because when you are deluded, deluded and forget who you really are, you lose the memory as to what you are in truth. And this causes a decay of the power of discrimination. And finally, from loss of discrimination ensues the annihilation of all right understanding. Now, you know, when you read these things intelligently, then you can go the opposite way too. Don't just read it, no, that's all right. But uh, take it from the lowest point. Any step that you have reached on this downward ladder into complete delusion, you can turn around and move up the ladder toward wisdom and discrimination again. For example, from loss of discrimination ensues the annihilation of all right understanding. But how do you get that, dis that discrimination back again? By simply seeing, well, I've been suffering. And I, do I like that suffering? I do not like that suffering. Therefore, is there something I can do about it? Well, if we think a little deeply, we find that certain things uh, go against our desires and certain things go for them. But bit by bit, we, as we rise up that ladder, we see that that which makes us happier is that which eliminates the ego. And so bit by bit, you can come through the recognition that you don't like to suffer to the further understanding that what you want is not only no longer to suffer, but also to feel um, more happy, more blissful, in fact. Gradually, as your, as your consciousness and your understanding become more and more refined, you come to realize that, that the only thing that's worth having is happiness, or more than that, bliss. And so bit by bit, you climb up to the point where you give up anger because there's nothing to be frustrated about. You give up desire, and you give up attachment. And finally, thinking about the world around you, you no longer think that, uh, I may need to go outward for my happiness. My happiness is inside. So the progressive stages toward happiness are to understand, first of all, what you really want in life. When you've suffered enough, and this is why all souls, no matter how far they fall, when they have gotten far enough down that ladder of suffering and find themselves just wallowing in the pit of pain, then they begin to say, do I like this? And first of all, they blame everybody else. They blame the world. They blame circumstances. But bit by bit, they come to the point of discriminating and realizing that this comes from me. And wherever I go, I still am suffering. Therefore, there must be something wrong with me. And it takes a long time to reach that level. But when you do, then you stop blaming other people and you stop blaming circumstances. And you say, okay, what can I do with myself? I'm tired of suffering. And as you, as you reach that decision, you begin to rise the ladder of superconsciousness back toward dispassion, non-attachment, non-anger, being completely peaceful in yourself and knowing in yourself that what you want ultimately is divine bliss. Joy to you.